Hello PM Transformers, this is episode number four of the PM Transformer podcast. Do you want to know how to plan your projects in a way that reduces overwhelm, stress and effort and makes look things super easy? Yes? Then this is your episode. Stay tuned. I'm Chris Sachs from Cactus Competence and you are about to start transforming yourself and the way you live project management. With more than 25 years of experience in project management and business, I'm the first to say that hard work, new software or fancy methods are not essential ingredients to successfully managing projects. So how do you transform from the inside out to leave overwhelm, frustration and stress behind, manage your projects with ease, gain clarity and make better decisions? This is the PM Transformer podcast. Hi, Chris Sachs here. I love this episode about planning projects. Doing a project plan that actually really works and make make look things super easy, that's what is great because people make things so difficult for them and then they wonder why they don't get things done. So that starts already with the first keyword, which is the definition of done. If you follow my episodes, you know that I've been talking about the definition of done in the episode number three of the PM Transformer podcast. So if you did not look or watch this, no, you didn't watch a a podcast. If you didn't listen to this podcast episode, then please go back, jump on this episode because this one that we do today builds upon the episode number three. I will just very quickly dive into some basics of the definition of done. First one, defining done means that you sit before a task is started, you sit together with all the people which are implicated in the tasks, in the execution. That means team A who does the first part and team B who works with the result, or if it's just you and getting somebody to do something for you, Then you sit together with this person and you would really define when the task is done, exactly the specifications when it's done. Which means when you do this beforehand, you will have much less discussions in the heat of the action. Because being serious, I mean, when a project's really running, you will have so many parts and so many things going on that you really do not want to spend hours discussing discussing that something in a task is not yet finished and has to has still to be done. So what I would rather do is spend time defining done instead of, for example, starting to collect data. Okay, now let's dive into project management, uh, into project planning, and let's see how the definition of done plays into all this. So you can, in, in project planning, you link tasks together. So you have task A and you have task B. And task A is normally what's done first, and task B is what is then done after. So there are several methods of linking tasks together. Some of them work, the others don't. So the first method that you can use to link tasks is start to start. That's the easiest one. I mean, you just say, okay, start task A starts, task B starts, they start at the same time, and that's, and that's fine. You don't need to really dive into how long the task will take, unless you have some planning behind. What I urge you nonetheless to do is to make sure that done is defined so that when there is something to do afterwards, that this can really be done and that the, the task can continue. And what you also need to into account, take into account is if one of the tasks has a lead time, which means, for example, that you have some preparation or you have when you have delivery, you have the truck coming over, all this kind of stuff. So that's what you need to take into account. But otherwise, super simple, start to start. Then you have finish to start, which is, I'd say, the big standard type of linking tasks together. One task ends, the next task starts. Normally you don't need to plan the duration because, I mean, when it's finished, it's finished, and the next task starts when this task is finished. So that's that's super easy. and What you need to take into account once more is a lead time for task B perhaps. And the definition of done is essential in this kind, in this type. Because if you define, if you do not define done for task A, then 
task B will not be able to start as foreseen. The problem is that you piss off, sorry for the rough words, you piss off team B who has to start and who is under pressure to start and they get a result from, ta from task A what they cannot work with. So team A has to rework the result of the task. But normally what happens in business environments is that ta team A is not sitting around like, okay, I've, I've done everything, now um, I relax, I go to the beach, whatever. But they, they're working on other stuff. And so they basically do not have the time to rework the task. But team B needs something more. And that's what causes stress, effort, delay. At the end of the day, perhaps you even have to do it yourself in order to keep things going. So I really would, would stress that you need to have your definition of done ready. You, you really have to, have to do this in order to not break your stride with the, within task A and task B. Next one is finish to finish. This one is a very interesting one because it comes from a theory of constraints, which means that you look at all the actions that need to be accomplished to achieve a certain result. And so when both tasks are finished, the result is achieved. Now, this type of planning is a little bit more difficult because you need to plan buffer inter. If you have done project management for a long time, you know that there is a chance of 50% that the task will be late. So if one task has a chance of 50% being late, then the result has a chance of 100% being late. Therefore, you need to foresee some, some kind of buffer and you need absolutely need to do duration planning in order to know when both tasks probably will be finished. Otherwise, you will multiply the problems of the finish to start um, planning and you really don't want to do this. So do your planning and do your definition of done to be sure that the result when both tasks are finished is really there. The next one is start before finish. And that is, from my point of view, the ultimate bullshit. I'll give you a, a real life example. Let's say you want to drive and to visit a friend and you got the following direction. Well, 500 meters before the end of town, you turn right. Um, yeah, the problem is you only know that you should have turned right when you see the end of town, which when you are in the car, it's not a big problem because you just make a U-turn and then turn left instead, 500 meters before. But in project, there are no U-turns. And therefore, start a task before another task is finished. I've talked to this, about this in length before, you sh before in the episode number three, why you should not accept 80% done. And basically, this kind of planning is based on 80% done. So what I would do to revisit this kind of thing and to make it work is plan with two tasks. I would plan with task A and task A prime and then say that task B starts of the, at the end of task A and A prime also starts at the end of task A. And that will, will make things work because then you have a defined result from task A that task B can, can set on to, to continue. You can have a definition of done so that the team who executes task B really can work on the task and is not in a kind of floating state. And A prime will serve to really finish the last some things from task A in order to get it into a status that means that this part is really finished. I hope this makes sense to you. And if not, please send me, a, send me an email or leave a comment so that I can come back and explain more. The next thing that often is done too is start to start with a delay. For example, st task A starts and task B starts five days after task A started. For me, that it's calling for trouble because if you say five days, why not four or six? And the problem is that it's also not adjustable. So when the task A starts and either is late from the start or um, encounter some, some trouble, then task B will start ta anyway because it's, ba it's bound to start five days after, after task A and you will have then perhaps task B relying on some results of task A or at the end they should come both together but they don't and all this lies in this kind of troubleful definition. 
So what you would want to do is define a task A prime, which will cover the five days, four days, six days, and then start task A and start and task B when A prime ends. Then you have a clear starting point for task B. What is very important is to get a clear definition of done for A prime so that you really make sure that task A and task B can start. Otherwise, you need to dive into and find out what's the problem and solve this problem before you get uh, task A and task B to start. These were the main types of, of planning, of linking tasks together in the project planning. Um, and what I would like just like to mention again if, is that if you mess up these kind of links, then what you will have is lots of stress because you will have people waiting for something to do, or you will have people ha have to do something and not have the time. All this can be avoided if you do the linking right. And now you also see what happens when you accept 80% done. It means that for the following task, you have uncontrollable de delays because basically you do not know when the task can, can really start and when the first task will be 100% done. So what you really need to look at when somebody reports 80% done, it's worth nothing. You really have need to have a look at the date when the task should be done if the 100% done is really achieved. And that is the secret to smoothening your project planning. And in the next episode, I will talk about how easily control projects with using a gate structure. Thank you very much for listening. I'm honored that you spent time with me. If you have any questions, please send me an email to podcast at cactus-competence.com or join our groups on social media and tag me in your comment. I promise I will get back to you as soon as possible and perhaps your question will serve for a future episode. I hope you found value in this episode and I would be super grateful if you could take the time and leave a review on iTunes, a good one by the way, <laughs> so that I can help more people with this podcast. Don't forget that all magic lies in action, so take action. As overwhelm and stress start with having too much to do, I have created a free workbook for you to find out if a new project is really worth taking on. So come over to our website and download that free workbook and get going. Stay well, goodbye for now and talk to you next week. Bye!